This call is being recorded. Hello, everyone. This is Renee Rentmeester. I'm the creator and executive producer of the Cooking Without Looking TV show and podcast. And today, we have someone who I met only a couple of weeks ago, but I feel like I've known her all of my life. Her name is Charlene Borkus. I met you at the uh, National Federation of the Blind at Tampa conference a couple of weeks ago. How's it going, Charlene? Oh, it's going wonderful. Thank you for asking me to be on. Sure, sure. I figured it'd be great. And um, you had a great story. Um, um, I, I will call you a rogue princess, but we'll we'll learn more about that later. <laughs> <But laughs> tell us a little bit about your life. Uh, well, I'm legally blind. Uh, I was born with um, hypoplasia of the optic nerve, which means the optic nerve is too short. So it affects, you know, what I see. I also have um, some light sensitivity and some color blindness. Uh, I'm a teacher uh, of students with special needs. Um, I'm currently teaching high school um, students with intellectual disabilities, ninth and 10th graders. And this is my fourth year at high school. Um, Before that, I taught elementary Uh, varying exceptionalities and students with um, behavior disorders, um, grades three through five. Uh, I'm adventurous. (laughs) I live in Florida. (laughs) Um, And uh, I hate talking about myself. I know. Um, I know. I'm like that, too. I understand. Yeah. Like, what do you say? (laughs) Well, you know, you're doing pretty well right now. Um, it's, it must be interesting because you've got a visual impairment and then you're teaching these kids with, um, you know, some extra special needs. How, how is that going for you? Uh, I know the other day when we were talking, it, it sounded like you were doing really, really well with that. Um, you know, I love what I do. Um, I, I, I kind of fell into teaching. Um, I had a job with AAA and it was, it was it was kind of stressful. I know it doesn't sound that way, but, um, you know, what I had done was really stressful. And a, a friend of mine, um, that I, that I rode with, uh, horses, um, she was the art teacher at one of the schools here locally. And she said, they're looking for a teacher's aid for uh, fourth grade early prevention dropout. And you'd be perfect because the school, um, was it, uh, Orange Ridge Bullock and they had, uh, that's kind of an interesting story, but um, the school <laughs> was very inclusive before inclusion was a thing. And so I went for the interview with my guide dog and uh, I got the job and working with these kids, I really related to their struggles um, because a lot of these kids had 504s or IEPs and learning was really difficult for them. And I just really connected with them because school was so hard for me because I couldn't see. And it was, you know, it was always a struggle to, I couldn't read the textbooks. Um, And if I did get large print textbooks, they came mid-year. Oh, gosh. Yeah. So, you know, I just, I hated school. And um, it, it was always a struggle. So that relation, I was able to relate with their struggles and, they could see that I was struggling or that I would come up with strategies to be able to see something to do my job. And so there was that connection. And so now as a teacher, I'm constantly thinking outside the box uh, or trying to, and you know, the, the textbook scenario of, well, this is what you do when you have a student with this learning disability it just because it's in a textbook doesn't mean it's going to apply to 100 percent across the board and so just finding um, strategies to get them to focus or um, get them to engage in their own learning and advocate and teaching them to advocate for themselves um, at an early age it was i i mm, it sounds like you're the perfect yeah yeah, the, the relationship building is I'm like uh, the relationship building is really easy because they see me struggle and I have accommodations in my classroom um, with 
with the lighting and the kids love the lighting. I have track lighting with multicolor lights and floor oh. lamps. So we're not using the fluorescent light because that hurts my eyes. Right, and right. yeah, so like a lot of kids that have sensory issues, they love coming into my classroom um, because it's subtle. It, you know, they're subtle. It's, it doesn't interfere with their learning. And so if a, if a student needs more light, they sit closer to one of the lamps or we direct the light onto their desk. And um, so they see me living through the strategies and it makes it easier for them to accept those strategies that I'm teaching them and actually use them. You know, some of the things you're saying, like I, I, I was just thinking back when you're talking about the fluorescent lights and, and they always seem so bright and I don't have, you know, anything with my vision or anything, but they did always seem so bright and to the point of being distracting. And I think the track lights that you're talking about sound like they're like calming. Maybe, maybe all kids should have that. I am a firm believer that fluorescent lights make a difference in uh, the distractibility, especially with kids that have, you know, sensory issues. Um, and, and at the time when I switched from the fluorescent lights to the track lighting, I was teaching students um, that were emotionally and behaviorally disturbed. And we noticed a calmness that uh, happened in the classroom when we use those lights versus the fluorescent lights. Yeah, that seems like that seems like an aha moment because you know those things are so bright. Mm -hmm. Well, and, it's the flicker that really affects me. So, if I'm looking at a paper or um and I I one of the other things I do in my classroom is I don't always use white paper. I use different colored paper pastels and that makes a difference um because you know, that white paper is very hard and harsh on my eyes. Um, and also, you know, I color coordinate masses on this color and um, reading is on this color or I, co I color coordinate groups. So um, because I teach multi, uh, multi, mul multiple grades. So that helps me with organization as well, color coding things. And uh, it, it, the flicker. The flicker from those fluorescent lights happens oh, on the paper, yeah. and it triggers migraines for me sometimes. And uh, wow, um, that's why I. Now, did you have to talk like the powers that be into doing these things differently, or were they sort of on board with you? I had an amazing principal who was so supportive of anything that I needed to accommodate my classroom. I have to say, um, you know, transfer, transitioning from the business world into the education world, the accommodations, when I need an accommodation to do my job, I, I am so supported. Um, and that doesn't always happen in the real world. No, no, no. It, you know, it seems like you're like the perfect teacher for them because if they were to have someone who like had the 2020 eyesight and always got the A's in school, you know, it seems like they probably wouldn't be able to relate. Yeah. Um, well, you know, everyone has, I, there is nobody that, and as far as I can see, nobody has perfect. We all have something that is a challenge to us. It may not right. be physical, but we all have our challenges and things that we have to work at. Exactly. Now, speaking of challenges, the thing that caught me when I spoke with you was your uh, pierogi story. And I, I want to call you the princess of pierogies. It was so funny. And as a person who my grandmother used to make pierogies, it really hit me. So uh, let's hear your uh, pierogi story for everyone. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, since you are familiar, you know how much work goes into making pierogies. And uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, my, my mom was um, 74 and you asked her what she want, what she wanted for Christmas. And she, you know, Oh, I don't need anything. You know how uh, moms can be. And I was right. trying to think of something to make her. So I'm sitting on the couch one morning watching the food network. And I think it was Tyler Florence 
he made this pierogi recipe. I'm like, oh, that's what I'm going to make my mom for Christmas. It's so perfect, <laughs> right? The perfect pierogies. Never have made pierogies in my life. So I pull the recipe up and I'm reading it and I'm like, oh, this, this is going to work. So I, I didn't have a, a, a stand mixer. And uh, so I pull, I borrowed my, my best friend Pam's st- uh, stand mixer, not having any reference to ever making anything with a dough before in my life. And uh, it called for like 13 cups of flour, which should have been a clue oh to me. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> it should have been my first clue that hmm, maybe you're taking on more than you should. It's so, a pierogi army. I know. Oh, my gosh. So I, uh, I made the stuffing the night before. I did uh, the mushrooms and, and sauerkraut stuffing and the potato stuffing because I, I like the uh, sauerkraut and mushroom, and my family likes the potato and cheese. So I did that the night before. So I started at 7 o'clock in the morning. It was Christmas break. I'm a teacher. And I'm like, I can get this done in a day. (laughs) That was my second mistake. So, (laughs) excuse me. So I'm making the, I'm following the recipe, and all of a sudden the blender or the mixer starts, making this noise because it's struggling <laughs> and I'm like uh oh I can't break Pam's mixer she needs this for Christmas dinner so I pull oh the dough goodness. out and I'm kneading it and I'm doing everything that I need to and oh there was so much dough so I started <laughs> rolling it out and you were rolling uh, in dough oh my gosh I was rolling in dough a couple hours <laughs> later I'm I'm like this is going to be longer than I thought maybe I should pour a glass of wine <laughs> That was at nine o'clock in the morning. And so oh, no. <laughs> and I'm stressing. And so by the time I, my, uh, I was married at the time, my ex-husband came home. I'm crying. My, my kitchen is just like a scene out of I Love Lucy. And uh, it, literally, there's flour everywhere. I'm crying. I'm like, I'm never going to finish this. And I'm, uh, there's dough in my hair. There's flour on the floor. There's, it, it, um, oh, it was, it was crazy. And I, I only made half of it at that point. And it was 8 o'clock at night. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. How many, how many pierogies did you get out of half of it? Well, um, just that half, I think I w- made – six dozen and uh wow and I don't even think it was half to be honest because I just (laughs) I called my friend my friend's husband who was a pastry chef and I I, and I said can I freeze this can I do this like in a couple weeks he's like sure I ended up able to make um enough pierogies to give my ex-husband's family my brother my mom (laughs) friends they all got like two or three dozen pierogies and i still oh had like God. four or five dozen for my family well do you want to uh, you and i talk pierogi pretty fluently but do you want to describe what a pierogi is for our non-pierogi familiar audience well it is a polish <laughs> ravioli that's the best yeah, way i can describe it and you can put you can put anything you want in it actually um uh traditionally it's potatoes and cheese or meat or kapusta, which is sauerkraut, um, mushroom, onion mixture. Um, but you can also do like blueberry pierogies, apple pierogies. Oh Um, yeah. It's, uh, I read cookbooks for fun. (laughs) When I get a new (laughs) cookbook, I like to read like, uh, the, um, the history of the food and, and and it's traditionally a a peasant food. Um, Yeah. As, as with most popular foods that we have now, tacos were peasant foods. You know, French onion soup was a peasant food. Pretty much everything. Yeah. So the history of food is is always interesting to me. But um, so it, it's basically it looks like a little taco that's sealed. It's a half circle, and you stuff it with whatever you want inside, and then you boil it, and then uh, we like. If it's the potatoes and the sour cream or the capusta, uh, butter and onions are, and then you fry it. And, oh yeah. Oh, and you serve it with sour cream or applesauce. And then we, I always use homemade applesauce if I, 
if I serve it. Oh yeah, those they they are just like heaven on earth. And I was wondering the the uh, the family must have been shaking in their boots the next Christmas to see who, if they were getting more pierogies. Oh, I, I was not going to do that again. <laughs> <laughs> um, we did we did make that act, exact recipe um, for my mom's seventy fifth birthday with you know the kibasa and the kawumpies and. Oh, and yeah, I enlisted yeah. I enlisted the help of my brother and, and a couple of cousins. So we had a production line, but it is definitely not a project you want to do by yourself. So I always have helpers when I do it now. And I have a, I found a, a, a smaller dough recipe. Uh, I think it's my, <laughs> not 13 my, cups. Yeah. And I think it comes, I think the website that I got it from was uh, my gram, my grandma's favorite Polish recipes. I could be wrong, but. Um, it's, it's a much easier dough. And I, I, I think it, it's, it's a smaller dough and it's actually sure. closer to what my grandma, um, and my aunts used to make. Well, now we know why the women were all in the kitchen all day making pierogies. Right. It was an assembly line. And now we know why <laughs> yeah. they drank a lot of wine. <laughs> there you go. It was just an excuse to drink the wine. Shot. Exactly. <laughs> Well, so tell us about your recipe. It's going to be a Monday's recipe of the day. We'll have it on uh, our www.cookingwithoutlookingtv.wordpress.com website. Tell us about your chicken pot pie. Well, my chicken pot pie is one of my favorite recipes that I like to make for family and friends. It's a, just one of those comfort foods, you know, and it doesn't matter if it's warm or cold outside. It's just a great comfort food. And it's actually a compilation of, I like to take a bunch of recipes. I don't know how you are, but I, when I find a recipe, I'm like, oh, I like this, but you know, I think it'd be better if I did this. So um, it's just something that I've kind of combined with the crust recipe, uh, a couple different pie crust recipes. And um, I have to give out a shout out to my cousin, uh, Suzanne. She's in our family, the pie lady. And she told me about using vodka in the crust instead of ice water. Um, oh, yeah, does it make you, it taste different? Yeah, um, I, I tried it. I I, uh, I tried it because, you know, that dough recipe makes two discs. And I like to have the bottom crust and the top crust. It just adds to the comfort. Right. And so I made one batch of pies or one one pie crust with the ice water and the other one with the vodka instead of the <laughs> ice water and um, it came out crispier and flakier oh that's interesting is it do you use the same amount of vodka as you use for the water yeah yes um but I did find that if you use the vodka you do need a little bit more than the half a cup not, 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 not for, some... you know, not for, not for the purposes here, <laughs> but no, it just, it just, <laughs> it seems, it seems, um, it just needs a little bit more. So I usually just add a, a little tiny, a few drops at a time to get the, the dough moist enough. And then, oh, okay. um, yeah. And then the filling is, um, uh, kind of, uh, m again, a compilation of different filling recipes from different cookbooks and different chicken pot pie fillings that I've, I've tried. Oh, well, that's great. So what do you, do you use, do you use like a, a soup in there or? Um, um, I use, you um, your own sauce? yeah, so I, I usually like to use chicken stock um, and uh, whole milk. Uh, it seems to make the best to make, you know, up to the the 12 ounces and the four ounces. And then um, I make a roux. I saute the onions and I like to use fresh carrots and celery because I do like a little bit of a crunch with the vegetables. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, so I saute all that with the butter and the onions and the garlic um, until I feel that the onions are soft or I see that they're soft. And then I sprinkle the, the, flour and I cook it down, make sure everything's coated really nicely. 
And then you gradually add the milk and um, chicken stock stirring until it thickens. I salt and pepper it. Um, and then you add the chicken and um, the, the, the uh, rosemary thyme. And I like fennel seed in there. It just kind of gives it a little. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 And um, it just gives it a little bit of a different flavor. And uh, I stir that and let it thicken a little bit on a, on a low heat for about 10 minutes. And then just before I get ready to pour it into the actual pie crust, I add the frozen vegetables so it doesn't get too watery. And I make sure my frozen vegetables are thawed. And I like corn and green beans and peas. Sometimes I put mushrooms in there as well. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'll use fresh mushrooms. But I put that in when I'm sauteing the onions and um, celery and, and garlic. Uh, and then I just stir it and pour it into the pie crust put the top of my pie on um, and you make sure you make a heat release. Don't forget to slice the, I did that once. It's not, not pretty. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> if, if, yeah. And, uh, and then I bake it and I don't like to use an egg wash on my, on these particular pies. Um, I, I just put them in and anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes until I feel or see that the crust is nice and crispy. And then I let it set for about 10 minutes before I eat it. Oh, wow. That sounds great. That sounds wonderful. Well, Char, um, if someone wants to reach out to you for your recipe or your um, uh, prowess with pierogies, <laughs> how, do <laughs> they, how do they reach out to you? Um, well, my email address is Charlene Brush at yahoo.com and it's all lowercase um and charlene is uh spelled c-h-a-r-l-e-n-e and brush like a hairbrush uh and i'm also on facebook is charlene borkus b-o-r-k-u-s yes (laughs) b-o-r-k-u-s well charlene thank you so much for being with us today we've really enjoyed it and um thank you for helping us change the way we see blindness I'm Renee Rentmeister. If you want to reach out to us, we're at www.cookingwithoutlookingtv.wordpress.com. And have a wonderful day, Charlene. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much. And it was such a pleasure meeting you. I love your show. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. That means a lot to us. Have a great day. You as well. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.